Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 151-151, presented by Parse Rum, the rum for whiskey drinkers, premium dry style flavor profile that you're going to love. Put your Parse over a rock or on the rocks or neat, whatever you like. Go to Benny's Total Wine and ask if they have Parse in stock. Dakota loves drinking Parse. I think he was drinking Parse so much. I'm late to get on today, Dakota. Your mic cut out, Ian. My mic cut out. My mic's back. Do you want to tell us why you were late? Well, because I got done with my workout today. And the guy that trains me lives on some land. And he asked if uh, me and the guy I work, uh, the, uh, a player I work out with, he plays in Michigan State, he hunts the kid I work out with and the guy that trains me. And they asked if we wanted to go crow hunting. So we went back in their yard and did some crow hunting. And the guy I trained with shot his first three. Three first shots, boom, 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 three crows, dead. It was sick. It was my first time ever, like, seeing stuff get shot. It was awesome. I got a rush, like and I didn't even do anything. I got a rush. That shit freaks me out. But it's crows. Like, they're – I literally said that to the guy. I was like, man, like that's just crazy. Like, now it's dead. He goes, they steal eggs from, like – they steal, like, babies from other animals. Like, don't worry about it. I was like, it's a good point. We don't need any crows. Were they sitting, or were they – no, they're flying. That's why. It's, that's why it's a crazy shot because they're right. flying I remember across the sky, and you're like, boom. Duncan uh, Robinson. Whenever he would hunt, I don't know if he still does. Um, they would say like, you kind of don't shoot any. I think it's quails. Um, you don't shoot them if they're sitting. Like it's just like not. It's not, not sporting. Right. Yeah, not sporting. No, so you just wait until they they fly up a little bit and then boom. I think it, it depends what you're sporting. hunting. Yeah, but yeah. It was cool. If I was a quail, I would just sit still then. I'd never yeah, move. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm just chilling. You guys, no, don't shoot. Come on. Someone should go educate the quails. It's like being it's like being unarmed. You're like, I just, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Just standing. But not I'm not flying. like an I'm not like an outdoorsy guy. So like they went to like collect the crows and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not touching that thing. Like no. I, I had a good time, guys, but I'm not touching it. Yeah, but I'll see. I gotta go do a podcast. Yeah, I was I was like, this was awesome, but I, I no thanks. I'm done now. Would you like to start with March Madness and your squad, or would you like to go? Let's start with your squad. Spartans, talk, baby. Talk to, Tom will just edit this right out. So you go ahead. Still dancing. What a game. Yesterday's game was sick. They played USC Thursday, beat them. Yesterday's game against Marquette was, I texted in our, one of my group texts, and I was like, I was so nervous late in the game. It was like a one point game with like two minutes left. I live and die with the Spartans. And we were living yesterday. Yeah. Whoo, what a day. We're on to the Sweet 16. Madison Garden, Zach's hometown. So fucking ridiculous because if Duke won, they would go to MSG. And MSG for them is like home. Like that. Mm. No, I'm telling you. Mm. I'm telling you. What, go look at any game that they've played there. It's basically a home game. Every they ever played Michigan State there? I mean, come on. Probably lost to them. Yeah. Wouldn't be right. the first time. We were we were in. I'm a big March Madness guy. I know you guys know this about me. I love basketball. And uh, the we were in the clubhouse when that Furman game happened. It was like the first day. It's yeah. so like March Madness, game, and then the, everybody was in the clubhouse when that shot hit, and it was epic. And I hit a square on the board for. Uh, Rich, that was, like the, that was like the second game of the tournament, too. Yeah. What do we say? My bracket, I think ESPN might reach out to me and say, hey, man, like, is everything okay? Like, <laughs> did you watch anything? Because did you even I, try? I already deleted the app. As soon as Duke lost, I deleted the app. I will say, I need to admit this in front of our fans. I couldn't have jinxed Duke Harder, but it was an accidental. Like, I wasn't fucking, trying to mess with that. tired. I didn't say shit yesterday either when Michigan State was playing. I know. Well, that's because you were sleeping. You said you took a nap. On the bus, because we played two and a half hours away for a spring training game. Stayed overnight. Florida Springs. Wow. But yeah, Ian, I, uh, me and one of our, our other buddies, Mark Huberman, were texting at the start of the Duke-Tennessee game saying how bad we thought Tennessee was, because I don't think Tennessee is a good team. I, I hope Michigan State beats Kent, Kansas State and then plays Tennessee and loses to them to prove me wrong. But I will never admit Tennessee's a good team. I don't think Tennessee, they're a good team. They're just, they just play bully ball. They were – oh, man, they beat up Duke. They beat him. Did you see Filipowski's eye? 
That was like an accidental elbow. I know, but like the whole game, he's just on the floor the whole yeah. entire game. He struggled with it. But yeah, March Mass has been sick. Uh, we don't we can't talk about it too long or Tom will get mad. I basically didn't move for four straight days and just watch basketball, and it was a fantastic time because the Spartans won two games. Can I say something that's been pretty impressive about this whole WBC phenomenon where like the ratings WBC have been fantastic, right? Attendance has been amazing. Ratings have been fantastic. It's been awesome for the sport. The fact that that is happening at the same time as March Madness, which is undisputably the biggest time in basketball on the calendar that WBC is going on and performing very well at the same time is really, really impressive. I was surprised with myself that I was still watching baseball when March Madness was on. Like, I mean, once, like, late in that uh, USA. Cuba? Is that when the Trey Turner hit the home? No, the game before. Venezuela, the Venezuela game. Like, there's basketball going on, but that game, Trey Turner hitting that home run, (sighs) injected into my veins. Bro. What an electric factory that was. Miggy just came back and he said it like it was just absolutely ridiculous. I just talked to Stro. So I went in for a minute today and Stro was in there. He just came back and was put his locker together working out. And he was I was talking to him about it. And he was like, dude, it was like, you know, he was there at that Joey Batista game where he bat flipped in Toronto. You know, he was like probably it's probably as loud. He's like, it's the atmosphere is crazy. It's like they- it's I mean, you hear all of these guys after they hit homers, they say, like, this is probably my favorite homer I've ever hit. Trey Turner said it was the loudest he's ever heard a stadium, and he won the World Series with the Nationals, and he said it's the loudest he's ever heard a place when he hit that home run. It's nuts. And, you know, Stro and I talked about this for a minute today. It was like we need, we need as a baseball community, we need to commit to playing more games in Latin America. You know, we just need to commit – to going and playing a Dominican series and playing a Puerto Rican series and, and doing it on a yearly basis and getting into those communities and, you know, keep growing the game there because the people care. There's 41% of TVs in Puerto Rico were turned on for that game. It's just like, dude, a hundred percent. And like, could you imagine if we brought some of their culture and fan, like more of them to regular season games, you know, like you always say like 162 games is a lot, but like imagine having more, you know, just intent. Like it would just make every the pa- game the feel like it. And the intensity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You Stro know, was like, talking about like the instruments. Like they're basically playing like drums and instruments the whole game, and like just that that passion for the game is is yeah. pretty awesome. It's just and, like it's just so different, man. You know, well, like and Zach said it when the Quijada struck out Kyle Tucker. Yeah, to end the seventh. And he gave almost like the Sukma to the USA and like was just going nuts. It's like in the regular season, dugouts are clearing on that. But like in the WBC, it's like that's how it is. Like it's what yeah, are you gonna that's do? How we play. But it, it's funny because you could see Arenado, he they showed him he was on base and he was just like kind of looking at Quijada do it. He's like, mm-hmm. We still got two innings, brother. We got two that's innings. A- it's a good, it's a good lineup. It's a good baseball team. What that is, I think Trey Turner was the nine hole hitter, isn't he? He was nine. He's he the homer. Yeah. De Rosa's like they keep saying quotes. Um, he's like, yeah, who's the idiot that keeps batting him ninth? I will say, I tweeted when they took out Schwarber because it was a lefty pitching, and they took out Schwarber for Alonzo. I wasn't happy with that. It worked out. Alonzo got a hit. Dude, Quijada's like, got to be a nightmare for lefties. Tell me a more clutch hitter in that lineup. Tell me. I'm dead serious here. Tomorrow in the championship, bottom of the ninth, two outs, you're down one. Guy on third. Pick a hitter in the USA lineup. I choose Kyle Schwarber. That's not biased either. That's who I pick. I don't care who's on the mound. I don't care. He's in a home run in every big game ever, ever. It's a fair take. Who else do you want? Who else do you want? And he's our guy. And he's our guy. I mean, that's beside the point. Like I said, unbiased. So we got Japan, Mexico tonight. Yep. Did you see how many people were, how many Japan households were watching the game too? How many TVs? 
I'm pretty sure all it said like all of them, over the whole like country? <laughs> over like 60%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really it's incredible and I I think we talked about this last. I can't fathom how Otani has like doubled his followership but like what's happening with Lars Newtbar? Like Lars Newtbar is making yeah. himself famous in the country of Japan. Like it's absolutely incredible. It's so good for the sports. Like it's I don't know how you could ever get mad at guys for going to do this and play in this thing. And then like you see the benefit of like you're going and you're playing in this tournament and people are caring and you're growing a personal brand. And like that in turn grows the game. There's going to be more people that watch the St. Louis Cardinals this year because they want to see Lars Newbar play baseball. I mean, did you see Yu Chang too having two absolutely ginormous home runs? Yu Chang and, then- and I played together in the fall league. Back, Dude, yeah, you know, like I don't, it's just it's sick. It's, do you think, honest question, do you think that the guys on the team were told to say how much they love to play in it? Because no. I feel like all at once, I, I agree, I don't think so, but it was kind of like all at once in their press conferences, every guy was like, I don't know how anyone would ever say no to playing this. He's like, they're all like, this is the coolest experience in my life. I think what's worth seeing happen as well is that this started in 2006. Like Ken Griffey Jr. was in the first one, which I don't even think I knew. I was saw when he was taking. I did not know that. Day, they were saying he played in the first one, and now that this has been around for, I think this is the fifth one. If my math's right, uh, it's either the fourth or the fifth one. It's been around long enough that the guys who are playing now grew up watching this event. So mm-hmm. I think at the beginning, the hardest part about starting an event like this is that you don't have any history at the start of it. You have to get people to buy in. We're past that stage now. People have bought in. Everyone's bought in on this being the premier baseball international event. And the fact that we're seeing the kind of games that we are, I think, is a product of the fact that guys have grown up watching this event now. And now that these players are talking about it this way, that means the next generation is only going to be more excited to play in it. So I think it's a really cool thing that they've done that this is now going to be a leg. I think this is the one that, in my mind, that has cemented the WBC as like a legacy event going forward. Speaking, I agree. Speaking of of buying in, Tom, have you bought in yet? This feels like in? a 180 from Tom. This feels like a. Are you bought in, Tom? Tom? Yeah, I'm bought in. I was Tom's watching, all I was watching in the now. Cuba game. Yeah, I will. That's it? You've only watched the Cuba game. No, I, I just that was the most recent game that was. I, I'm going to watch Japan Mexico tonight. Tom, do you feel like? You are a WBC fan. Are you going to be excited for the next WBC as soon as this WBC is over? As I as I said, I was excited. I, this was a little misconstrued. In 17, I was excited. Well, well. But I, as I said to you, I think part of the thing that hurt it was that it's been so long since then. So I think we've kind of forgot about how good the event is. And seeing these players buy in the way that they have and the way they've talked about it, it's starting to feel a little World Cupish to me. This is starting to feel like for the countries, these certain countries, Japan, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. I know that's not a country, that's a territory, but still, all for all of those places, this is starting to turn into their World Cup for and what the rest of the world view soccer as. These countries view baseball as their primary sport. And to have those countries buy in, and I think the coolest thing is to play the games in those countries. I think that's been the smartest move. And obviously playing in Miami is not playing in Latin America, but you're able to get a lot of those fans. But playing in Japan and playing in Taiwan and all these different places allowed the local fans to see it. And I think gave those games a real atmosphere, as, as the players have talked about, where I think that's almost an advantage it has over the World Cup. Like you saw the World Cup, it was in Qatar. It's not the same yeah. atmosphere. The fact that this is being played in these countries means something. Would you guys be uh, open, or do you think it had the big, uh, the same effect if it was every other year? I don't think it needs to be every other year. I think four they could go to every third. Four years is just like, supposed to be is, every third. This was so big this year. Like it, it is so big. It's supposed and to be now, every third, right? Huh? Because seventeen, they were supposed to play in twenty. They was seventeen. They were supposed to play in twenty, and it got wiped. Was it twenty or twenty one? I thought it was 21, to be honest with you, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I would do it every third year is what I would do, Zach. I don't know about yeah, these two guys, but like what I would do. I think every other is too, too recent. It's, it's, it is four years. So it's four, like the Olympics, I would probably do every three because I think that it's, I think that it's an amazing event. And I think that because of the international audience capture and like how excited it gets people for baseball, 
think every third would be pretty good. That's what, right. Do you think, do, can we revisit that? Like, is that a thing? Like through the, the union? I, like what, what is that? I, I think, think that's that outside this, of MLB. I think that this is going to, I think the success of this one is going to spark conversations about how the next ones are formulated. And I think there's going to be a lot of, I think this one was kind of like a, let's bring it back in and see how it does. And I think with the success of this one, it's going to be like, Hey, let's start prepping for the next one and really like get it all together because this was so incredible. I'd say the day Mike Trout said he, so they, I mean, think of Mike Trout's playing Shohei Otani's playing. Uh, Mookie Betts is playing no one or not like all the guys Francisco Lindor once those guys commit it makes it an unreal event like if you got no offense to anyone in the past but like if you got like bench players playing they're probably not nearly as excited for this but it's literally the best players in the world playing in this tournament for all their countries and like, like there's still teams that don't have all of their guys too, which is crazy. I think, like we could have Jacob deGrom starting in the judge, final. like judge is Cole. Play, yeah. Crazy. A lot of bullpen arms too. I have a question though. We talked about this in one of our group te- texts. I, I think Zach agreed with me. Scott disagreed. But when guys said like, whether they would rather win the WBC or the world series, what do you think? Ian, which right now, Ian, would you prefer? World Series. I mean, it's it's hard because I didn't get a chance to play in WBC, so I can't say like what it yet. feels like. You didn't in get the a moment. chance yet. Four years. Yep. Never know yet. Uh, but it doesn't. I I can't say what it would feel like wearing that jersey and being a part of the scene. But like, the WBC is an amazing event. It's an amazing tournament. You have to win what, six games or eight games to get through the whole thing? Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to – baseball, you World Series, you have to get through 162, and then you have to win fucking 20 games in the playoffs. So my argument, as Americans, I understand the World Series because that's what we know is the MLB. But I said, if I'm Venezuelan, Dominican, Cuban, think of that forever. Like, you can do whatever you want in those yeah. countries if you win – a WBC like that is their sport like Tom said like they have baseball they don't really play other sports so winning that would be like Argentina when they won the World Cup it's like this is as good as it gets so I get other countries saying it, but I get also in America we have the MLB so like guys grow up watching the MLB you know yes I agree and I can see how guys you know I could see how especially like when you go like not that the path to being a big leaguer is easy as someone who's grown up in America, but like it's easier, you know, like you get to, like you get to, you play in high school and then you get a college scholarship and then you go and you get drafted and you get a chance to like do this. Like guys coming from this Latin American from anywhere, but from Latin American countries, you know, they, a lot of the guys grew up and didn't have much. And then this was a way for them to provide for their families and like to be able to give that back to your country, like, and to give that back to your family and the heritage and everything, like just, a, I, I think we've all played with enough or guys from Latin American countries and, and you can tell how much it means to them to represent their country. You know, guys wear arm sleeves from their country. They put the flag on their gloves, you know, they, it's really an important thing. It means not, not that, you know, I think we all love the United States of America, but it's just really the passion to be able to come from that country and then represent it. it it's really showing through in this event. I agree. Should we talk about Manscaped before we talk about injuries? Manscaped has the performance package 4.0 for full body grooming experience. Performance package 4.0 is now coming with the Weed Whacker 2.0. Auto point O's here. And all other below the waist grooming products. They also have the beard hedger. Dakota, you know something about the beard hedger? Would you like to talk about it? I do. I love it. It's got the uh, adjustable thing right on it where you can change the length. 20 hair cutting lengths, Dakota. That is 20 hair cutting lengths with the beard hedger, waterproof cordless trimmer that has a rotary wheel. That gives you all of those 20 lengths. The pro kit comes with beard, shampoo and conditioner, manscaped beard oil, and beard balm. 
Uh, code. I just, I just used the shampoo when I took a shower. I used the beard shampoo. That's why it looks so nice and clean. You do look really nice and clean. Twenty percent off plus free shipping with code compound at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Twenty percent off free shipping. Code compound manscaped.com. I didn't have time to put on the beard conditioner though, because I was rushing for the podcast. So I'm gonna have to go back and reapply. Boys, we have a new sponsor. This is a new sponsor for the rest of the Woo! year. It's a big deal. I'm excited about it. I know you're excited about it. We have Love Bruce it. Bolt joining the pod. Everybody knows Bruce Bolt gloves are the gloves that I use on the field. I have two colorways. One that I wore last year is white with baby blue uh, with a red bolt. That's the uh, Chicago flag theme for me. I have a new one coming out right around opening day. And I can tell you what it looks like. Okay. But I'm going to tell you that it's coming out. So go to Bruce Bolt. Check it out. Check out the gloves. Check out the arm sleeves. Check out the elbow guard. Check them all out. But really, just check out the Hap series because you can wear what I wear, and I think that's pretty cool. Can I even wear it? You could wear it. Ooh. You could. Nice. And you'd look pretty cool. What a night. Let's talk about injuries. That's Sorry, a segue. Picturing a segue? using a that's trimmer a is. with batting gloves on. <laughs> yep, that's what that's just took you right there. And now I want you to talk about guys getting injured during WBC. Stinks. You hate to see it. Uh, it was really sad what happened with Edwin Diaz. Like talking to some of the guys that had been in the locker room, like it was just a pretty emotional. You know, they won, and then it was like really, you know, emotional time in the locker room after that. Uh, obviously, hard for Matt's the Mets team, the Mets fans, um, him personally and his family, you know, and then you have Altuve gets hit, but there's stuff that happens every day in spring training. Like Arenado it's of, also got hit. Who? Arenado got hit. Yeah, but he's good, right? Yeah. His, it came back negative. Yeah. So, but there's stuff that happens every day. You know, we were in spring training game yesterday. Nola got hit in the face. It was like horrible. There's stuff that happens, you know, you go out there and you play and it doesn't matter where you're playing, stuff can happen and it stinks. But, you know, I don't think it is at all an indictment on WBC and I don't think that it should. I really hope that it doesn't have a negative impact on how people have viewed the event. I think it was helpful that players came out right away and said basically like, this is the risk we are willing to take. Like we know that there's a chance of getting injured at any point when you play baseball and that they still would play like given the opportunity again like they're still like yeah I'd still love to come play for this team because that's like you know it's just part of the game as much as it sucks that it happens yeah and it stinks but like they're you know, the Gavin Lux thing happened at the beginning of spring training and like mm -hmm. right at the beginning when you know guys aren't throttled up and like he's not running it a hundred percent and you no know, he doesn't have to make the team like he's the guy and like stuff still happens and it's unfortunate but like I said, shouldn't be an indictment of the event. And like, it's good. You're right. It's good to see that players have come out and been super, super positive about it. Well, I think the only people, sorry, go ahead, Zach. No, I was just going to piggyback of what you guys said. I think Mookie and Trout came out the other night and they were just like, listen, if you have a chance to play, no matter where you're playing, like play in this event, yeah. like this is, this is legit. It's good baseball. And, you know, don't let, you know, like you guys said, a few injuries deter you from doing it because you can happen anywhere. And Ian is someone that could very realistically be a part of the, what is it, 2027 WBC? Like, as someone like you who could be on that team in four years, like, wouldn't you say that Mike Trout and Mookie Betts saying, you guys should do this if given the opportunity? Like, wouldn't that really kind of push you in that direction if the time came? Yeah, 100%. That's why it's such a cool event is because, like, the best players in the game, and it doesn't matter what country, right? Like, the best players in the United States – are recruiting the other best players in the United States. Like Lindor, not, you know, maybe it's easier in some of the, but like Lindor is recruiting all of their guys to come play for their team. And then you have, you know, Miggy and Altuve. And like those guys are trying to put together the best team for their country to represent, you know, who they are as baseball players. And they're, and I think that's what makes this thing so cool is that, you know, the guys came back from the Puerto Rican team, a couple of our young guys were there and they were like that. It was so awesome to get to talk to Lindor and Javi and like get to 
you know, pick their brain and to have Yachty be the manager. And like, I think that you'll hear a lot of the same things. Even Master Boni went over and played, you know, he, they were in Tokyo playing um, in the, the pool play. And it was like, it was an, um, just to be in Tokyo and like be out there was an unbelievable experience. Then Mervis got to like have Jock, like kind of leading that Israel team and like all that, like, it's so cool for young players to get like that experience um and you get to learn from some of those veteran guys but you're right that's the best players from that country kind of leading their group uh is what makes it such a special event i talked to jy jared young after last week's episode and he facetimed me and he confirmed he's like it was literally the coolest experience of my entire life and he debuted last year so like he's played in the big leagues he's experienced wrigley and he's like that was the coolest thing i've ever done playing baseball and especially for like the younger guys like in countries like that yes. like canada who like doesn't have maybe a ton of players getting that chance to go play like at chase field against the usa like think of how cool that is for those guys especially yeah and there's, there's some guys that will play for some of those countries that maybe will have major league time and great careers maybe they'll have a little bit of time or no time and like that might be the best baseball experience that they ever get to have and like what mm. an awesome thing that that is like the guys in the czech republic like what an amazing experience that is well that's why i was trying to look back at my family tree and see if i had any check in me to see if i could get on that team i don't know yeah <laughs> You still find it somewhere. Ancestry.com. Yeah, be in four years I'm gonna be on Ancestry.com. Like I have 0.1%. Uh please let me on your team. I forget what is it like your grant, like it, it only goes as far as like grandparents or something. Yeah, I think they've taken that's the international soccer model, and I believe that's in play here as well. So they go back two generations. So well, if you have any lineage two generations back or closer. My mom's dad's from Portugal, so <sighs> Portugal for trying to make a run. Let me know. <laughs> maybe you should go. Maybe you should go over there and start that. Start that group up. Start firing people hey, up to play some. Me ball. and Ronaldo. Me and Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know, man. Could get crazy. So we only have ten days before opening day. Ten. Mm-hmm. Nine. Ten. Uh, we're only about a week left in camp. Sneak it up on us. This is about the time. Like so, we're for the for the listener. This is our. Last off day of spring today. I don't know. Right today. off today too. Yeah, we're off off. I think we're the only team that only has one off day. We have two. We've had back to back Mondays. That's because the Tigers want to be great. Yeah, you guys work hard and everybody else. That's fair. Glad, glad to hear that. Uh, so we are off today, and kind of like how you know how we're talking about it, or you know the process. This is kind of been what we've done the last few years. It's like once you come back from this off day, it's like. All the lineups are, you know, basically everybody's playing together. Guys are coming off the bench as they would in a game situation. We'll start playing seven. I don't think, I don't know that we'll get to nine innings, but we'll start playing probably seven and then we'll play eight innings for the last couple of days. Um, And you start to ramp up the intensity and the speed and like all of like, this is getting ready for the season. The whole thing has been getting your feels and getting feet under you. But like now you're really playing up to game speed so that you're ready to go next week. And that's, it kind of like shocks you. You're like, yeah, we're just, you know, it's spring training. Everything's great. And then it's like, get ready because we're going in a week. Like, fuck. Zach, isn't that hilarious to hear from an established big leader? Because, Zach, did you walk into camp and you're like, ah, let's just ease into it? Or did you walk in and you're like, let's go to work? I had to hit six homers every at bat in my first live BP <laughs> for me to feel accomplished. It's just crazy the difference of like for Ian, it is kind of like, all right, like we're getting the feel for it. Like, not that you're not trying or anything like that, but it's just like kind of like, all right, like get my swings in, get my work in, get ready for the next day. And now it, I get what you're saying. Now it's like, all right, like now I'm going to actually go up there and compete because in 10 days you do it for real. Yeah. And it's like finding that it was an interesting camp for me because it's like you're finding that happy medium of like, I'm going to go out there and put together a competitive at bat, but then there's like some things you're trying to work on. Like, all right, I know this guy has a good changeup. So like maybe in a game setting over 162, like maybe I'm trying to not swing that change up at all, but like maybe because I know this guy has a good change up, I'm like, you know, what would be a really good box for me to check today is like getting a change up in the air, like getting it, getting like not rolling over this change up. And like, so I'm going to sit on it and I'm going to try to, 
get in the air and like I fly out on that guy's changeup. I was like, oh yeah, nice swing. That plays like that's how that feels. Or like I went up there the other day, a guy with a good changeup, and I had been kind of I'd been a little in swing mode this spring and hadn't walked much. So like, all right, I'm gonna see this guy up and I will not swing at a changeup. Like I'm gonna do everything I can to attack heaters and let anything below that go. And so, you know, take three heaters in it or three uh changeups in it at bat and like even though like I rolled over at the end of the batter got out, like you kind of come out of there and go like, well, okay, that was very good. That was a productive at bat. And like, I been really lucky to be able to like look at my at bats that way or have that perspective. But then you kind of go into, as you get closer to the season, like, all right, now, you know, I'm maybe I'll get two at bats against the starter or three at bats against the starter. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to watch the starter like I would for a normal big league game day. I'm going to prepare my plan for him. And then I'm going to try to go through two or three at bats and like feel how that feels. Because now instead of pitchers kind of feeling for stuff now and like working, Oh, this guy's working on his slider. He's thrown seven sliders in a row. Like now guys are kind of going back to, Hey, this is how I'm going to pitch during the season. This is how I'm going to kind of work through my process. Catchers are calling games a little bit more realistically. So everything is kind of turning into more big league like atmosphere instead of guys working. On. I think it's okay. I say this JY told me that, uh, when Canada played USA and Lance Lynn started the first like inning, he only threw sinkers and cutters. And he said that Freddie free, uh, who was catching was a Smith or real Muto was catching. He told Freddie Freeman when he came up for a second at bat, he goes, Hey, just so you know, like he's using everything now. <laughs> like his first time through, like he was literally just sinkers cutters. And then like real Muto literally told him like the second time through, like, Hey man, like just so you know, like he's throwing everything now. That's amazing because that's yeah. like there are times in the spring training game where it's like you can almost think yourself into a backward situation where you're like this guy there's this guy has to throw me a fastball at some point but it's like no no he's exclusively working on cutters and changeups or like yeah. this guy is ju- is trying to throw 50 percent changeups today because he's really trying to work on or he's going to throw a strike one and then he's going to throw a fade one under or you know this guy has thrown 70% sliders to righties and it's just not on the report. And that's because the guys are working on something. There was a report the other day and I looked at, I kind of, you know, you go up and you glance at the report and it had hundred percent fastball three, two, this guy has a good change, hundred percent fastball three, two. So I get to a three, two count. I sell off for a heater. Like it's the season. He throws me a nasty change up under it. I swig and I walk back and I was like, fucking hundred percent. Who wrote that report? A hundred percent. Is that, that's hitters favorite thing to do. Like is to look at a hundred percent is different. A hundred percent is like, okay, hundred like, percent is a fastball. Like there's, he has never done anything else. It is a fastball. But I, I love that when hitters come in and they're like, says he's 75% slider with two seconds. Why is he throwing me two straight changeups? It's like, I don't know, man. Like you struck out, didn't you? Like, that's probably why that's why he yeah. threw it to you. Yeah. The best is when a guy comes in and there's like, it's like 4% change up and then he throws a change up. Like, oh, just what is that? 4%? It's like, yeah, that's respect. That's yeah. respect. If you're getting a low percentage pitch, it's a respect pitch because that, he didn't think he'd get you out with the other two. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, I faced Chad Cool and I punched my first AB. He went like slider, heater, big curveball. And big curveball is like very low in his percentage. And like before I went up there, I went up to my hitting coaches again. I was like, hey, let me see his report one more time. Like, I just want to see percentages. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's mostly fat, um, like four seam right now. And just like the gyro slider. I'm like, all right, dope. He's like, you probably won't see the curveball. I'm like, all right, great. It's so like, I see the slider out of his hand, two strikes. And I'm like, oh, yes. And it's like, wait, nope, that's the curveball. Never got there. Strike three. Uh, there's nothing worse than that. But that's, it's like, you make those decisions during you know, spring training or the season, but you make those decisions based like that is the right thing to do. It's the right educated guess to make. And when the guy throws you the low percentage pitch and he gets you like, that's the challenge of the baseball season. It's like sticking with the, the next time I go up there, I'm still going to stick to the, because over the course of my bats for the year, I'm going to be right more than I'm going to be wrong. And that's the thing too, like with the percentages, it's like, okay, like, unless it's a hundred, like you said, a hundred would be, I'd be like, okay, like this is what he's throwing. Like, I don't care. It says a hundred, but for anything else, even if it's 90%, he throws this and this count. It's like, I mean, you got to stay on that. Like he say, he say 90% of the time he throws slider with two strikes. Your first at bat, you strike out to a fastball up your next at bat with two strikes. You still got to be sitting slider. Cause it's like, all right, like, Still ninety percent. Like I got <laughs> yeah, it. It's He's gonna ninety percent. It. It's got to be it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the fun part of the cat and mouse. Do you want a better sex life? If so, you're not alone. 
A lot of guys want a better sex life. Up to 50% of men have symptoms that get in the way of wanting or enjoying sex. But Roman is here to help. Roman is the digital health clinic for men, offering genuine medication that helps you achieve and maintain a strong erection. Roman offers discreet wipes that help you last four times longer in bed. In men with low T, getting testosterone levels back to normal can help increase your libido. Roman offers a testosterone test, and if it's appropriate for you, treatment for low T. At Roman, there's no waiting rooms, there's no hassle. It's a straightforward digital experience from the comfort of your own home. If medication or testing is appropriate, Roman will send it directly to your door. Everything arrives in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. To learn more about how you can achieve your own personal sexual health goals, go to row.co slash johnboy. That's row.co slash johnboy today to get 20% off your entire first order. Row.co slash johnboy. Roman, the digital health clinic. Zach, how are you feeling in preparation for the season? Um, I feel, I honestly feel really good right now. Um, it's, I've had a few, like, I, I don't want to say cooled off, but, um, I had a few good ABs that, you know, I lined out the other day. Great spring um, training I, about. Yeah. You know, but, <laughs> um, need hits. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't know. It, I feel really good. I'm still having really good takes and everything. Um, it's just hard because I, I haven't been in camp this long before. Like today it was a big cut day. Um, and it's so hard to not like worry about every other factor in my position right now. Uh, you yeah. know, you went through it when you were your first year, first or second year. Um, and it's hard. It's hard not to play. I've actually I'm pretty happy. Like I haven't played the, you know, notorious GM that everybody plays. Um, yeah. Well, if this guy's still up and I'm up, who's up? Right. No, I've had like three people today like, hey, man, like, have you heard anything? I'm like, no, I haven't asked. Have you talked to my agent about it? Don't want to. Like, whatever happens, happens. And if yeah. I'm, you know, if it's great, great. And if it's not, whatever, keep working. But it's it's tough to not, you know, try not to keep those blinders on and just keep moving forward as cliche as it sounds. But it Do is it. tough to not think about it, you know, obviously. It's the human of course. side of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. tough. And you know, you don't want to worry about obviously ever what somebody else is doing. But again, like this is a time where you, you're starting to read into the schedules. You're trying, you're starting to read into the groups and it's just so hard not to. Um, if you're in a group with Miggy, you're in good shape. That's all I know. Yeah, that, that hasn't happened all spring. So maybe they'll throw you in there and that'll yeah. be your way of finding out. I'm gonna, I, if I was in that clubhouse, I would just put myself in Miggy's back pocket. I would just be, I'd have a string attached to his leg and I would just be walking everywhere. Nope. I mean, we're attached. So you can't, I'm just with him. He would hate you. And you'd be like, that's yep. fine. I'm his guy. Like, that's though. Okay. You can't, you can't send guy. me down because yep. then Miggy's got to go down too. Yep. I think he actually really likes me. Uh, <laughs> Zach, do you have a favorite swing or a bat of the spring? I think this is always a fun one because like for the listener, there's a bats during the spring that dial you in because when you're in it in the spring everything feels a little foreign to start and it like the moves feel a little foreign and you're not really in your flow yet and then you'll have it bats through spring training where you like clip a ball or you hit something oppo and you're like oh that feels right like that's who i am and then yeah. like you'll have you'll have like little reminders throughout spring that give you confidence but also like remind you of little cues that you have so do you have a cup do you have one or two of yeah. this spring that have been like um, yeah I faced Charlie Morton last week. Um, I don't know if we, I think we did the pod in between. Um, and I've, I've never faced him before. And I just know that he he's, has a sinker. He has a curve, like a huge curveball. And then he also has like the way he throws, if he throws the four seam, it's just going to rise. So like, I'm almost wishful thinking, like hopeful thinking in the back of my mind, like just throw me a sinker, just throw me a sinker, please. You know? And let off the game with a walk, took some took some good curveballs from him, took some high heaters, and like there was no still no stinkers. Like four or five. I actually think, I don't know if I went to full no five pitches, five pitch walk, whatever. And the next day be, I think starts me off curveball, like huge. And I'm like, all right, like and tries to get me again. You know, I get to two strikes, I foul a, cur- a, a heater straight back, four seam again, and I'm like, fuck, you know, like, is he going to try to backdoor me? Is he going to try to go higher? Is he going to try to front hit me again with the curveball? Cause like the first one I took and I was like, <clears throat> you know, like it, it's big, like it's, it's sweepy. It's massive. Yeah. Sweepy. It's sweepy, very spinny. Yeah, and spinning at 3000. Right. So 
he uh, shook a few times and I was like, what is he trying to go to here? And again, I don't know if he was trying to fuck with me or whatever. Um, and he threw me a change up, which I don't know if I would like what you were saying. Like, I don't know if I would get that in the regular season. You know, I could have him like, again, he shook a few times, but after the second one, I was like, I don't know. I, I don't even know if he throws a change up to righties right now. Like, I don't know. And he threw me a change up and it was just, it's probably like five miles an hour off his heater. So I think it was like 86 when I hit, but he was like anywhere from like, 91 to 96 that day so it was kind of all over it and threw me a change up and I hit it to the left like kind of stayed through it and I got to first and I was like wow like that was nice you know I hit over the shortstop's head stayed through it and that whole day I didn't swing at any of his curveballs because those sweepers you know like those are big now where like the Yankees are all throwing yeah they're bangers big, yeah like the sweeping sliders with crazy horizontal because it's so hard to get on plane with like if it's right on right or left on left and I didn't swing at any of them which I was just like Kind of after the day, I was like, wow, I was kind of locked today. Um, and then another one, I hit a homer um, off, I think, Thornton from the Blue Jays. He is like this high high ride, like crazy high vert um, heater and took one up and away, got it to 2-1. I was like, all right, that's what he's trying to do. And then went back to a slider or a curveball. And I just saw it pop like right away. And I came off the bench. It's like the fifth or sixth inning. We're losing. I I, I – pretty sure the score was like 18 to two at this point. So like sitting on the bench and I'm just like, I mean, I'm stiff as a board. And then they come and get me like, Hey, you're hitting third next inning. And I'm like, Oh my God, like what is going on? And like, kind of, you know, just kind of got locked in as best as I could. And then, you know, as soon as like I see it pop, I stay on, I don't get too antsy, hit it to left for Homer. And again, kind of like a, all right, you know, that's a really good sign. And, and again, still like all camp, I've been taking a lot of, you know, bastard pitches is what I like to call them, where they go strike to ball or, you know, ball to strike where you foul them off with two strikes. Um, still striking out a little bit, but again, you know, like it, it comes with it when you walk a lot too, you're always in deep counts and these deep guys counts. just, you know, they can just put you away. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, like I, I felt pretty good all spring, um, just kind of staying with that, that routine every day and every morning. And, you know, it's tough where, don't really have a report on somebody you're getting a different arm every inning still um but yeah like I said you know it's at that point of the year where it's just kind of head down and keep moving forward those swings those lock-in swings were the fun ones I had one uh a little earlier in camp where I got a heater kind of up and in and it was his first pitch first pitch ball with the Osby pitch to go 1-0 and then he was like I'm sold out for a heater he threw me a heater up and in at like 96 and I hit a ball a million miles and right. it was first yeah. first homer first homer of camp and to like go through that process match up to a high heater it's like that was amazing and then the other day I was like been pulling a lot of balls and not really driving the ball up or hitting many balls oppo and so I spent the whole day in BP just hitting oppo line drives and like getting fisted and like hitting some foul balls in the cage, but then like like really like all right, this is all I'm focused on today. Guy with a good change up popped up my first at bat. Was like all right, that's good. You know, he advanced the change up forward. He hit it in the air. It's good things. Next at bat, man on uh, first and third, two outs, and he threw me a first pitch change up middle of the way, and I stayed through it down the line line drive oppo double it's like that's what i was working on all day <laughs> this is it all came together it was it's those great are the dude. best ones it's nice because even like as a hitter you feel good all day in bp like the other day we faced the cardinals and best bp i've had in years like i mean like back spinning everything perfectly like even the the hitting coach was like yo that spin is just incredible like usually i get top spin heavy in bp i'll try yanking things and like left center going way back, but like not even trying to. And it's just like taking off. And I'm like, yo, like I am right where I need to be. And like I punched my first AB on three pitches. And then like next AB, I swing through a heater down the middle. And I'm just like, why? I feel so good in BP. But then like the contrary, like what you said, like when you're working on something and you have that plan going into your at bat and it works, there's no better feeling. Oh, there's nothing better. It's like I just worked all day on this and then it came alive in the game. So it's what we sign up for. Uh, let's give the people the Sloan screen time. I don't know what mine is. I haven't looked yet, but I did just take a call on the speakerphone, and it's definitely Sweet. not going to help my. Uh, oh, that's not going to help my time. So I'm not feeling great about this right now. Uh, mine's five twenty. 
Also, I checked it, check for Dakota. Portugal does not seem to have a national baseball team. They they tried to qualify once in 2010. Uh, they went one and two, and then it does not seem like they've ever played another international game. So if you want to well, be captain, you know, you could be oh, the you play. You could be the captain of the team, it seems like. 100%. And I can't wait to take over. <laughs> I'm going to be the leader of that program. I'm going to take us to greatness. You can't team do worse. Portugal. Than- Hey, listen, you can't be worse than Burholder. That's all I'm saying. You could lead a better program than him. Uh, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. Uh, what was your Zach? 253. Wow. Damn it. I had a good one today, too. 328. I am three hours and one minute, and I'm disappointed in myself. And you're three hours behind us. So. I, had, I had a lot of time on... Basically, we got Ian in last place. What was your time yesterday, Dakota? Tell people what your time was yesterday. Don't worry about what it was yesterday. What was it yesterday? Yesterday doesn't count. We're doing today's. Oh, my goodness. Yesterday's was 1249. Sloan is the world's leading manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems. Company is at the forefront of green building movement, provides smart, sustainable, hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water efficient products, including... I was responding with text. flush meters <laughs> including flush meters faucets, sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. I'm going to have people in the left field stands at Wrigley cheating. flush meters flush meters I love that. Because I care about Sloan flush meters That's your Sloan screen time. Go get yourself a bottle of Parse. Go to Benny's. I actually total wine asked behind the desk about Parse. No, what this has to do with Sloan. I just got a text from McNulty and he said, going to miss this when spring training is over hashtag company guy. And it's like the Sloan trailer that has a mobile <laughs> restroom. Yes. Outside you know, of Sloan park. Speaking of Sloan, I went to Taylor Swift concert the other day. Okay. You're Swift. Yeah. We heard you and Nico, right? Yeah. That is such a, is such an Ian <laughs> concert. Oh, she was amazing. But when Taylor Swift concert, it was great. They had so it was at the the Cardinal Stadium in Glendale. Yeah. Which by the way is an amazing facility. Really hard to get in and out of, but and really far away from everything, but really amazing facility. They had these new Sloan flushers, automatic flushers that are the craziest. I need to talk to somebody there and figure out what this technology is. But these automatic flushers are the craziest tech ever. They're like this. They're like this big, and they like sense the when to flush. It's amazing. I should take a picture. I, I was like, you didn't a do a great job explaining that. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't really understand. But yeah, yeah, so, um, I should have taken a photo because that wasn't a very good explanation. But they were really sophisticated, Sloan flushers. Basically, right? Sloan's taking us into the future. Is what yeah. I'm there are. They're on the, the world's leading manufacturer. I don't know if you heard that earlier. I of, did. Of flush I was just reiterating it. Reiterating it. <laughs> but I, uh, 152 next week, I, depending on the day, you might be back in Chicago. Fun times no. for everybody. Uh, it depends so. what day we, I mean, day if we did it on like Thursday, we'll be back before that. All right, see you next week. All right, episode 152 of the Compound Podcast. 151. It's 151 next week. 152. 51. 52 is next week. We'll see you next week. Parse. Rum. Rum. Rum.